second grade. Today we are going to continue reviewing our unit on matter, solids, liquids, and gases. Um, this week we're going to focus more on the different ways that matter changes states and how, the mo how heat can be added or taken away to change the states. If you stay tuned to the end of this video, I will also show you how we can create our very own ice cream. So let's review what we learned last week. We learned that matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. We also learned that matter comes in three states. A solid, which has a definite shape and volume, like an ice cube. A liquid, which has definite volume but not shape, like a liquid being poured into a glass. And a gas, which has no definite volume or shape. This week, as I said at the beginning of the slide, we are focusing on that matter can change states when we add or take away heat. We're going to focus on the four changes in matter. Condensation, evaporation, freezing, and melting. Melting is when matter changes from a solid to a liquid. In this case, heat is added. For an example of this, ice cream melting on a hot day. And if you look in the picture, the ice cream is melting down the little boy's hand. The next change is evaporation. This is when matter changes from a liquid to a gas. In this case, just like melting, heat is added. If you look in the picture, the lake is evaporating up into the sky to form clouds due to the heat from the sun. You can try this experiment out on a smaller scale at your own house. All you have to do is on a sunny day, take a cup of water and dump it out onto concrete. Then you're going to draw a chalk circle around your puddle. Check back in a few hours. Is the puddle still there? Chances are it won't still be there because it's evaporated into the sky. Our next change is condensation. This is when matter changes from a gas to a liquid. In this case, heat is taken away. Think about your car window in the winter. When you get into your car in the winter, the outside air is cold, but as you blast the heat, the car warms up. But what happens to the windows? They begin to fog up because the air on the inside of the car is condensing onto the cold windshield. The last change we're focusing on is freezing, when matter changes from a liquid to a solid. Again, heat is taken away. The best example I think of this is continuing to think of my car in the winter time. I always leave water bottles in my car overnight, and when I come back, the water has frozen because the air outside cooled, cooling down the water, causing it to freeze. So let's take away heat and make ice cream. Here's what you're going to need. A cup of half and half, two tablespoons of sugar, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, Three cups of ice, which is more of like an eyeball amount, but I'll explain more of that later. A third of a cup of rock salt or kosher salt, or if you happen to be stopping at the supermarket, you can pick up something called ice cream salt, which would work really well for this. Um, a sandwich size zipper bag and a gallon size zipper bag. If you don't have half and half on hand, uh, you can use heavy cream, or if you have coffee creamer, that would work well as well. I just would not add the sugar and vanilla extract because the creamer already has flavoring. I don't think I would recommend using just plain milk or almond milk for this experiment because it's going to be too thin and you need a creamier base. On the next slide, I'm going to show you making my ice cream, but here are the directions written out. First, you're going to mix the half and half sugar and vanilla extract together in a pitcher or a bowl. Then you're going to pour about a cup of the mixture into a sandwich bag. Next, you're going to fill a gallon-sized Ziploc bag about half full with ice, and you're going to add the third cup of salt, and you're going to mix that together. Finally, you're going to place the sandwich bags with the mixture in a large bag and seal the bag firmly. Then it's going to take about seven minutes, and you're going to take turns shaking the bag until your cream turns to ice cream. Hi everybody, today we're going to be making ice cream by freezing cream, but which means we're going to be taking away heat from the cream and turning it into a solid by using a mixture of ice and salt. Uh, we learned this week that 
Uh, matter can change into its different states by taking away or adding heat. Another great example of this is I'm sure many of you have a candle at home. And if I use the heat from my flame and I light my candle, this heat is slowly going to melt the solid wax into liquid wax. So I'm just going to leave that going as we do our ice cream as another um, state of matter to observe. So let's get going with our ice cream. So the first thing you're going to need is about a cup of half and half. You need two tablespoons of sugar, half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. You're going to need about three cups of ice, but that's not really an exact number. You're mostly with your gallon size bag. You're going to fill it up about halfway. So it's not an exact cup of ice, it's how many will take you to fill it halfway. Um, you're going to need a third of a cup of kosher salt. It's super important to use um, a coarser salt, so maybe if you have rock salt would be another great one to use. Or if you happen to be running by the store um, in the aisle with a bunch of ice cream toppings, there's something called ice cream salt. That works really well. Um, and is used for these kind of things, and it's a very coarse salt. So that, if you're running to the store, to pick that up either. Um, and then a sandwich bag, which is where we're going to be putting our ice cream. So the first thing I do is we're going to mix our half and half sugar and vanilla extract in a pitcher or bowl. I'm just going to pour mine in. And this is actually a really great experiment because we learned last week that matter is anything that has mass or volume. And when I'm using my different measuring tools, I'm actually measuring the volume I need of each matter. So I needed one cup of cream, or half and half. I'm going to need two tablespoons of sugar. Two. And then I'm going to need half a teaspoon of vanilla. And the sugar and vanilla are acting as our flavoring to our ice cream. Hold on a second, I'm gonna get this off. Okay. Okay, and then we're just going to take a spoon and we're going to mix that together. you want to pour your mixture into your small sandwich bag. One way to kind of do this easily and prevent spills is to actually take a glass and you can put the bag uh, in the glass and kind of wrap each sides around it like this and then it's a really easy way to pour and making sure that you're not spilling. I'm going to pour the mixture. I'm going to pull it out of my bag. I want to um, squeeze out carefully as much air as I can from the bag because the more air, the less the, uh, the liquid is going to come in contact with the ice, and we want to make sure that it freezes. All right, my next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill my Ziploc gallon bag about halfway up with ice. And then I'm going to add in my salt and mix that together. and reacts with the ice and makes it speed up the cooling process. 
I'm going to take my ice, I'm going to dump it in, and you just want to mix it around a little bit. I now want to make a little crevice in my ice so I can drop my bag of liquid into the ice. And again, you want to squeeze as much air out of your bag. And now what you're going to do is you're going to shake your bag for about seven to 10 minutes. I would set a timer for seven, seven minutes. Practice shaking it, check it, and see if your liquid has a freeze or not. And then keep on shaking it. I would recommend if you have a oven mitts to use, so the ice is gonna get cold, or using a dish, dish cloth, or I'm gonna just be using some paper towels to wrap around my ice bag as I shake it. So I'm gonna be shaking this for seven minutes, and I'm gonna check back with you guys in a little bit. All right, it's been about seven minutes, and I first wanna show you guys my candle. Um, so obviously, if you also want a candle to check out, check back. And there is now a pool of liquid wax showing that the heat did melt it. All right. Now for the ice cream. So I shook it for about seven minutes. And when I pull it out, my liquid bag is now a solid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my ice cream. And I'm going to put some into a bowl. that out and then I happen to have on hand some Reese's peanut butter chips that I can add to make more of like a sundae so I'm going to sprinkle some of those on top and I have some sprinkles whatever toppings you have lying around feel free to use and now the best part you get to try your homemade ice cream it's pretty good. <laughs> um, make sure down below if you have tried making your own ice cream, I would love to see it. As well as there are some questions I'd love for you to answer on Flipgrid. Um, I'd love you to talk about your experience making ice cream. What happened? What did you notice? Um, as well as if you can identify what caused this change from a solid to a liquid. I hope you guys have fun making ice cream, and I'll see you all next week. I hope you all give this ice cream experiment uh, a try, and I hope that you enjoy your ice cream. If you do complete the experiment, I would love for you to answer these following questions and post them on Flipgrid. Think about what happened. Was it harder than you thought to make the ice cream? Was it easier than you thought? How did you cool your matter? Exactly what happened to change the cream into ice cream? The Flipgrid code is going to be listed on the choice board.